Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel, your second video of the day. I might have done a live stream earlier as well, I can't remember whatsoever, but welcome back to the channel. We're on the way to a quarter of a million subscribers here, which is like five and a half Stamford Bridges, I think, which is kind of madness. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already, and today we are going to go through two of the best potential lineups. Now that we've got Enzo Fernandez, we made a video a couple of weeks ago talking about the ideal scenario for what a Chelsea team could look like if we sign our number one target. And lo and behold, what did we go and do? Well, we signed our number one target. So in this video today, we've got option A and we've got option B. I'm going to go through both teams and then I'm going to entertain the idea of where a couple of players who don't make the starting 11 could potentially fit in to start the conversation in the comments down below with you guys. So without any further ado, we're going to start with option A. And as I've been trying to push this agenda on GBFC for various different reasons, 4-2-3-1 is the formation that we are rocking with here. I think as Chelsea go forward... If you watched uh, today's earlier video, Enzo Fernandez loves Declan Rice, so I think we're going to sign him. I do. I've thought it for a very long time, and this coming window is the one. So we're sticking with a 4-2-3-1, and this is a lineup which could very much be available very, very soon for Chelsea. We're not in the same position as we were a few weeks ago with everybody being injured. So the back four that I've gone with here, with Kepa in goal. I think Kepa's the number one right now. Mendy did something to one of his fingers. Don't know which one it was. So Kepa's not ready. Kepa, Reese James, Thiago Silva, Baddy Ashil, and Ben Chilwell. I think Chelsea are pretty set and solid when it comes to this back four. Mark Cucurella. I've got to talk about him for a second because he misses out. I didn't give him a box in the six things we learned because, quite frankly, watching Cucurella, apart from the first maybe one or two games of this season... I've seen the same things. The man is a bit too erratic. And I think positionally, yes, the man is supposed to be better in a back four than he is in a wing back position. And I think it was universally agreed amongst Chelsea fans that if we're playing wing back, Ben Chilwell's the man. Maybe Cucurella is the man if we're playing a back four. I don't think Cucurella is the man, I'm afraid. I've watched him play numerous times now this season. And I think Ben Chilwell is a far better footballer. I think about awareness again, the conversation we had in today's earlier video. Awareness-wise, Cucurella is caught out of position so many times. And what I want to see sometimes from defenders is, yes, I do want to see defenders getting forward and influencing the forward transitional play that Chelsea go in when we're in possession. But at the same time, how many times do we complain about Marcus Alonso for being stuck up the field. Cucurella's got the speed to get back, but it means that he's trying to make last-ditch interceptions and blocks all of the time and can't forwardly defend, which is the way Badia Shield, Thiago Silva and Rhys James the majority of the time manage to make defending look so easy. It's because they are defending what's coming at them and not chasing after people. That's what I see from Cucurella and I don't see it as often from Ben Chilwell. Not a perfect defender, Ben Chilwell. Still, I think better going forward. But Chelsea's best option right now. And this is what we're doing in this video today. Moving in to a midfield pivot of Enzo Fernandez and Mateo Kovacic. Similarly to what I said earlier about Declan Rice. I think Kovacic being the deeper lying player in this midfield pivot allows Enzo Fernandez the creative freedom. Which is what I think we need to do to unlock the potential of Enzo Fernandez, And I think, once again, we can't let him do the role of being a single pivot, because it's not a pivot then, it's a single defensive midfielder. If we allow Enzo to do that by himself, because we don't think we got the personnel, or we want to prioritise even more forward-thinking players going up the field, I just don't think that this is going to allow the brilliance, the mercurial brilliance, of Enzo Fernandez to shine through. I think he needs someone alongside him who is defensively astute to be able to go forward, create more chances because we've seen him do it already against Fulham. Clip balls over the top, spreading the ball out wide, switching the play, something he does a lot at Benfica that we could absolutely benefit from here at Chelsea. So Mateo Kovacic, we know he's not that guy to get forward, make the final pass, get assists, score goals. When he does score, they're brilliant goals, but he doesn't do it very often. So this allows Kovacic to do what, he does do very well, gives us a bit of a break as fans from saying, what does Kovacic offer? 
Kovacic offers the ability to free up Enzo. And that is what Chelsea need to be doing, or Graham Potter needs to be doing, at this moment in time. We then go into the front four. Mudrik on the left. I'm not writing this guy off just because he had a cold in the game against Fulham. Kai Havertz in the number 10. Noni Madwiki on the right wing with Raheem Sterling. No, not Raheem Sterling. Zhao Felix up front. I've seen a lot of you guys questioning why I say we need Felix's creativity, but we're putting him as a striker. This is a fluid front four for Chelsea. Zhao Felix can drop deep, allowing Havertz to go forward, but then Havertz and Felix link up combinations. What Chelsea haven't been doing is final third combinations. What we do is pass the ball side to side, wait for an opportunity to cross, and that is not profitable for Chelsea in forward areas. So what this has is pace and natural width. Chelsea can stretch teams by having Mudrik hug the touchline. Madwiki hug the touchline. Both players have the ability to cut inside and take players on, linking up with the number 10, Kai Havertz, linking up with the forward striker, Zhao Felix. That is option A. We now move into option B. And again, I've gone with a 4-2-3-1 formation. The reason I didn't go with a 4-3-3 is because I don't think Chelsea have the right personnel or the good enough personnel right now to operate with two number eights with one player holding. Unless we look at Enzo Fernandez potentially in a number eight role, but then we absolutely remove all of that defensive ability of controlling the tempo and breaking up the play that Enzo has when playing as a six. The back four picks itself once again. For me, at this moment, three clean sheets in a row. Reese James is walking in. He's the first name on my team sheet. For every game that Reese James is fit, he's the first player that I would put on the team sheet and I wouldn't even consider at this point until Malogusto signs. No one is considered on that right side other than big man Reese. Silver, Baddy, Shield, Chilwell, Kepper in goal. Moving in then to what I think is right now the dream Chelsea pivot based on personnel already at the club. Enzo and N'Golo Kante. This, for me, could be absolutely magical. I think this has got Champions League winning midfield written all over it for Chelsea Football Club. N'Golo Kante, if he can get back to that magical mercurial best that we saw in the run-in when Chelsea won the Champions League in 2012 under Thomas Tuchel, then I think Graham Potter has got a chance of doing it again. You look at Dortmund, we can beat these guys. I think Bruce Dortmund not having the best season themselves. Got a few individual great players in there, but they're not the same structured, organised team that we saw a few years ago. So I think Chelsea with a pivot of Kante and Enzo once again. To repeat myself, Kante frees up Enzo. And Enzo can also free up Kante in the advanced N'Golo Kante that we've seen post Maurizio Sarri. I think there's more than enough balance in this midfield for us. Moving into a front four, and you'll see I've dropped Xiao Felix into the number 10 to maybe get the best out of him. And I've just given David Fafana the run up front. I think some people have said he looks a little bit erratic. He looks a bit chaotic. I think David Fafana, I disagree with that, by the way. I think that Fafana looks ready built for the Premier League. He's strong. He's quick. He's not frightened to try and get his body in between defenders. Yes, walk in to the comparison to Didier Drogba. He's from the Ivory Coast. Yes, we know that. Didier Drogba was arguably the best striker the Premier League's had. Not quite maybe Aguero. Totally different players. But in terms of a physical presence, Fafana's got the ability to be that. And I also think, once again, he can run between the lines, beyond the lines as well. And I think we get the best out of Zhao Felix again, being the second striker. And I couldn't put Kai Havertz as a striker in this video. Otherwise, it puts me across as the most fraudulent individual on the planet because I have made it clear over and over again that Kai Havertz cannot be the most advanced striker at Chelsea Football Club, which means Zhao Felix may need to do it. And it also opens the door for a conversation again about should Chelsea buy another striker in the summer or... Do we give Fafana a chance? And because this is the best 11 that we can field right now, I say we give Fafana a chance. Now, I would love to see option A because Kante is not going to be back for the game against West Ham next week. Kovacic may well be back for the away game against West Ham in the Saturday early kickoff. I would love to see this team that you guys see on the screen right now away at West Ham next week. Pending, obviously, 
No more injuries, no more reoccurrences, no more training ground kerfuffles and scraps. Not that we've had any of those, by the way, just to clarify. But that is what I'd like to see. Or maybe for Fana, given the chance, Xiao Felix dropping deep. It could well be option B, but with Kovacic for N'Golo Kante. Let me know what you think about these two teams in the comments down below. And you'll also be aware that I've not put Mason Mount in either of these two teams. Just to clarify, I'm not writing Mason off. I still think Chelsea... There's a reason why he's won the player of the year for the last two years. I don't think Mason Mount is finished. The man is in a bad run of form, and I said it in my video earlier today. I think at the moment, he's all over the place on the field, and the final ball isn't what it needs to be, because he's potentially trying too hard and thinking too hard. And when the mental side of the game gets involved, the overall outcome of what you finish with is quite often scrappy and trying to clutch at straws to pick something good and at the moment that's the case so I think Mason Mount needs a few games maybe not a few a couple of games on the sidelines just to calm down a little bit really and to allow what is a very stacked Chelsea squad time to shine and an opportunity to do so and I think with Fafana being used as a striker with Felix just behind him I think it is a phenomenal looking front three and I think we can get the best out of it the other player who I want to discuss because he'll be back from injury in about five, six weeks time, is Christian Pulisic. When you look at these front fours, if we look at it like that here, in both of these lineups, I think there could be a place for Christian Pulisic to come into this if form isn't good and either Madueke or Mudrik struggle to acclimatise to the Premier League. I was very impressed with Madueke in his debut when he came on for Mudrik the other day, and I was very impressed with Mudrik away at Liverpool and I don't think Chelsea fans should expect to see that low level of performance from Mudrik again I think if he had a cold he had a cold it's as simple as that a spade is indeed a spade so Mason Mount could fit into one of these two if he comes back into form at the moment I wouldn't be picking him and Christian Pulisic I think is one of Chelsea's more creative players who will run at defenders so maybe then we push Shao Felix further forwards Christian Pulisic can play as a 10, perhaps, a second striker, or he could play out wide with Mudrik or Madwiki coming into that second striker role. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. And you'll also see that I've not put Raheem Sterling in there either. Chelsea have just got so many players. I think Madwiki is going to give everything and is a bit more of an out-of-the-box risk-taking player, which Chelsea desperately need in attack right now. Brilliant options to call upon someone like Raheem Sterling from the bench but let me know what you think of both option A and option B in this video is there anyone that I've not spoken about do you think Ziyech could still do it for us wasn't impressive him the other night I'm not gonna lie but let me know if I'm missing out anybody here in particular thank you for watching this video I guess subscribe to GBFC if you are new and haven't already done so thanks for all the support this week come on you blues